Hi there, it's Bob here from Insidium and it's Top Tip Tuesday time. On today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use XP Ocean. Now, this is normally used to create ocean surfaces, but we're going to use it in a more abstract way to create ocean surfaces on any scene geometry. So this could be your company logo, it could be 3D text, whatever. So let's begin. In our scene, we have this text primitive, which we've got the letter X, and we've got this plane, and we're going to use these two to make our surface. So first of all, let's just make our text invisible, and we're going to go to Insidium, X Particles, Generators, XP Ocean. Now, by default, this is set to primitive mode, so it, bring, it generates its own geometry. But we don't want that. We want to deform the plane. So let's change it to deformer mode, make it a child of our plane, and now it's on that surface. I'm just going to go to our material manager. We've got a standard material here, uh, an old school one that I'm going to put on the plane. And this has just got a Fresnel shader on the um, uh, in the color channel, which gives us this nice kind of more ocean look. That looks nice. So let's make a few adjustments to this. Um, this isn't going to be a full XP ocean tutorial on all the settings. We're just going to use it to make a cool look to then create our ocean surface. So let's put the wave height down to maybe eight. We're going to put our ocean size down to about 250. And oh, let me just show you actually in the plane, we have it's 250 by 250 in size with 300 segments in the width and height. So if I just come in and press NB, it's quite a dense mesh. The denser your mesh, the more polygons, the more detail you'll get from your ocean surface. But obviously it'll be slower to uh, calculate. Let's go back to the XP Ocean. One cool thing we can do, by default, the smallest wave is set to 1. If we put this lower, it's going to draw a little bit more detail out of this noise. Let's hit 0.1 maybe. And I'm not sure if that's come through with the compression in the video, but that's a lot more detailed now that we have brought that in. And um, yeah, that's looking good. All right, especially when we're kind of reflecting this light that's in the scene with those reflections. That's looking cool. So that is our ocean surface. We could perhaps lower this wind speed just a little, and that's bringing us a little bit more detail. And I'm gonna add, let me just show you this damping. If the damping is on zero, there is no kind of movement with the wind direction. It's just reflecting back and forth. If it's on full, it fully follows the wind direction. So that looks pretty cool. It's good to have a little bit of that damping, even if you want that wind direction. Um, and it just gives you a, a bit of those kind of realistic reflecting of that water. So the last thing we need to look at and understand is our choppiness setting here, because this can cause problems with what we're going to do next. Now, what the choppiness does is it kind of pinches the waves together where they're at their highest and it stretches them at their troughs. So if I increase the choppiness, you can see, look, that happening and you get quite a lot of exaggerated animated detail there, which can work quite well. The problem is if you go too far, look, it breaks the mesh. And if you have any kind of folding like this, even if it doesn't seem that visible, it's going to break the Boolean operation that we're going to do in a moment. So it's important to know that it's the choppiness setting that will be doing that if anything goes wrong, and then we can fix it. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. In the meantime, let's just put that choppiness down just to one and hit play. And there we've got this nice ocean surface. That's looking really good. Okay, so now let's get this onto our letter. So let's go to our text and make it visible. And where this plane is intersecting this object of our X is where the surface will be. So let's put it something like that. And then we need to go and bring in a Boolean object. Now this Boolean object by default has remove self intersections on. We don't need this and it adds kind of an overhead in processing as well. So if we switch that off, it'll be quicker. And let's put our text in there. Let's put our plane in there. And let's change the mode from union to intersect. And there we go. Look, we have got our ocean surface on our um, letter. Fantastic. One thing we need to do now this you'll see the playback has slowed down and that's because we've got our XP ocean generating this ocean surface and then the cinema 4d boolean object is having to create this geometry if I hit NB look it's creating this quite intricate geometry every frame so that obviously has an overhead let's hit 
na now there's a couple more things we need to do if i just switch off this light you may see that we've got some bad normals with some kind of shading errors um, in some of these sections let's see if we can find uh, there's one here look I'm not sure if you can see that on the video and there's some shading errors in this part of our mesh as well which we don't want but we can fix that really quickly just go to the boolean and click on high quality normals and then look that has fixed that issue and those normals are now perfect good right we can put our light back on and finally if we want this to loop we can get that sorted uh, to loop it we just go to our xp ocean we activate looping and we make sure that the loop time is one frame after our final frame so let's put that on 201 let's put our uh, playhead to the end and as this plays through our timeline and goes back to the beginning yep we've got a perfect loop and that is working cool so that is how we get a nice animated surface on a static object and how we can fix any of those issues oh let me just show you let's break it intentionally if we go to our ocean and increase that choppiness you can see look our mesh has disappeared and it's completely gone if we reduce it down until we get our mesh back and hit play that's fine but it's important to kind of scrub through look there's another moment where we had a bit of that choppiness folding there where it's disappeared at frame uh, 167 so that says our choppiness is too high we'll put it back down to one and what you want to do is scrub through your whole timeline to make sure that you haven't got any of those choppiness problems uh, before you kind of bake this to alembic or render it but that is how we get that cool looping animated surface on our scene objects in this instance it, the, uh, the letter x it could be a logo it could be anything you like